But I think the other complication for many of us in the human rights world, and I come to this as a human rights person rather than a, an internet or communications expert, is that with human rights point of view, we're very comfortable thinking about the content of communication. We know about Article 19 protections for the right to freedom of expression. We know about questionable privacy. We know those debates very well. When it comes to the infrastructure of communications, when it comes to issues of connectivity and application, that's where human rights thinking, I think, is much less developed. And that's an area where we need to think much more how we would apply human rights values in that kind of environment, what it would mean for the way that communication structure is developed and built to empower the populations of the world. So hopefully we can have a conversation exploring those issues. We want to focus particularly this morning on the challenges and the opportunities and how we might take the rights agenda forward within the IGF, and hopefully that will set up the Internet um, Bill of Rights Coalition this afternoon to really build on the work that we have here. So I want to start, first of all, with us, both someone from the Internet Bill of Rights Coalition, China Mystery, to just kick us off with the perspective from the Dynamic Coalition about the importance and significance of rights. And if you could perhaps turn a little bit sideways so the camera can catch you, that would be really helpful. The Dynamic Coalition uh, that has set out to bring a human rights-based approach to uh, the Internet. How about we turn all the chairs from the front to the floor? Let's go to the front. Yeah. Bringing together all the different uh, uh, groups. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, let's start again. It's taking a human rights based approach to the internet to make it um, an integral part of the internet governance. Now, human rights means different things to different people, but the common theme for our diverse membership is protecting rights. Uh, the IDR is bringing together all the different groups under an umbrella. I myself am from the private sector, uh, representing a small to medium business. Um, the other concerns are also about freedom of speech, privacy, and security. But I'm also heavily involved in humanitarian work um, of trafficking, where the fundamental rights of freedom um, itself uh, is at stake. And the internet has become a tool for wrongdoers. In both the arenas, issues of human rights are important. Uh, the IPR coalition is first and foremost a platform facilitating collaboration between the various member groups. We want to showcase and facilitate their work. And in this context, uh, current members include civil society, NGOs, uh, private sector, and governments. And we're very happy to report that we are getting more governments signing on. So briefly, we're looking at rights uh, from three perspectives. Uh, on a social level, how people treat each other. On a service level, uh, when service providers can use their issues. And infrastructure level. So the Bill of Rights platform wants to take a decentralized approach. Uh, we've done a lot of work earlier this year getting organized. Uh, we have a strong steering committee and uh, an enthusiastic chair, we're eager and ready to go, and just ready to launch our website, and we invite all of you to support us in the end. Thank you. Thank you. Organization, where all the organizations can come together and work from a position of strength to build public policy. Thanks very much. Um, can I come to Jeremy from the framework? Hello, I'm Because before the so I think it's important to have these basic underlying principles based on which we can articulate policies and engage with them. One of the most fundamental sort of principles that we have been discussing comes from the basic uh, declaration of principles. This is the this is the newer document, and in the first paragraph, it calls for a people-centered, inclusive, and development-oriented information society. I repeat, a people-centered, inclusive, and development-oriented information society. I was uh, very happy when Andrew spoke in the beginning about the fact that when we talk about rights, some kinds of rights are more easily understood, like the right to privacy or the right to freedom of expression, but then there are some other rights which are not as well understood. And I think uh, when we look at rights, a rights perspective can actually be the theme for the entire discussion on internet governance. And that's why for us from the Dynamic Coalition, uh, uh, coalition on the Principles of Internet, we thought our work and the work of the Bill of Rights Coalition is so much in common 
um, it's very important that we must open more space for critical social analysis to understand why technology uh, does not normally change in equal power relationships, but tend to reinforce them. Uh, and this is an example of the concentration media and the terrible effects on democratic processes and uh, uh, I think a uh, generalized uh, situation, especially in countries like mine. And if, what, if we accept uh, global responsibility <coughs> for the worldwide effects of our technological and economical activities, we absolutely need intercultural and universal standing norms and work on them. Human rights provide currently the only universally available set of standards <coughs> for the dignity and integrity of all human beings. And the most important issue is um, the powers to their enforcement are very limited, including uh, non-state non actors, means more social domains are being privatized as security, communications, environment, etc. So uh, the only solid basis we have uh, as humanity <coughs> until now uh, is articulated in the, human, in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, such as the right to freely participate in the cultural life of the community, to enjoy the arts, and to share in the scientific advancement on its, and its benefits which is the Article 27, uh, or the right to education. As my fellow said, uh, education shall be free, at least in the elementary and fundamental stages, Article 26. Of course, uh, uh, and this was uh, commented yesterday uh, at the UNESCO meeting, Article, Article 19 provides the right to the freedom to seek and receive information and ideas to any media and regardless of frontier. Herewith, an international right to knowledge is constituted. This right includes that everyone is entitled